page 90. Poetry. Introduction. A poem is a composition in verse, usually characterized by concentrated and heightened language, in which words are chosen for their sound and suggestive power, as well as for their meaning and using techniques such as rhythm and meter. To read and hear good poetry is to appreciate the subtleties of cadence and rhythm, the variety of pace and pattern, and all that goes to make up the music of poetry. Every poem that we read adds to, in some degree, our total conception of poetry. Of the eight poets in this selection, four are from the classical tradition, Dunn, Milton, Blake and Coolridge. The other four are closer to contemporary times. Eats, A.K. Ramanujan, Emily Dickinson and Kamala Das. Page 91. Chapter 1. A Lecture Upon the Shadow. John Dunn, 1572-1631. John Dunn was representative of the metaphysical poets of his time. He set the metaphysical mode by vibrancy of language and startling imagery and a preference for a diction modelled on direct utterances. He was brought up as a Roman Catholic. Later he converted to Anglicanism and was dean of St. Paul's Church till his death. The total effect of a metaphysical poem at its best is to startle the reader into seeing and knowing what he has not really noticed or thought about before. Like all Dunn's poetry, this poem too reflects an emphasis on the intellect and wit as against feeling and emotion. And now begins the poem, A Lecture Upon the Shadow. Stand still, and I will read to thee a lecture, love, in love's philosophy. These three hours that we have spent, walking here, two shadows went along with us, which we ourselves produced. But now the sun is just above our head. We do those shadows tread, and to brave clearness all things are reduced. So whilst our infant loves did grow, disguises did, and shadows flow from us and our cares, but now tis not so. That love hath not attained the highest degree, which is still diligent, lest others see, except our loves at this noon stay. Page 92 We shall new shadows make the other way, as the first were made to blind others, these which come behind will work upon ourselves and blind our eyes if our loves faint and westwardly decline. To me thou, falsely thine, and I to thee mine actions shall disguise. The morning shadows were away, but these grow longer all the day. But, oh, Love's day is short if love decay. Love is a growing or full constant light, and his first minute after noon is night. Understanding the poem 1. How do the shadows before noon differ from the shadows after noon? What do the two kinds of shadow represent? 2. Love is described as light. What makes the poet talk about shadows? 3. Comment on the use of the image of the shadows for the idea that the poet wants to convey. 4. The poet seems to be addressing his beloved in the poem. What is the message he wishes to convey to her? 5. Instead of a lecture upon love, the poet calls the poem 
a lecture upon the shadow. What is the effect that this has on our reading of the poem? Page 93. Language work. 1. Notice the spelling of the following words. Hours. H-O-U-R-E-S. Shadows. S-H-A-D-O-W-E-S. Sun. S-U-N-N-E. Noon. N. O O N E Clearness C L E A R N E S S E Behind B E H I N D E The E that was used in dance period got dropped from English orthography later. Pick out the other words in the poem that have this peculiar feature. 2. Take note also that the apostrophe is not used for indicating the possessive form, love's philosophy. 3. Examples from other poems from this period. How neatly, though, we give one only name to parents issue and the sun's bright star try this out notice the adjectives in phrases such as infant loves and brave clearness what is the meaning of these adjectives one in isolation two as part of these phrases Suggested reading Go and Catch a Falling Star by John Dunn The Flea by John Dunn